looking at the commercials, you'd think that those so-called soft rotors, like duty four-wheel drives, are the ultimate in off-road machines. They can clamber over ears, rock, drive through rivers, whatever. The reality is most can't. Still, Toyota's convinced that with this third generation, the latest RAV4, it's a fair bit better than what you'd expect. Still, Toyota's convinced that its third generation RAV4 is fine when it comes to getting down and dirty. But how good is it really in the bush? First things first though, on road the RAV is a pretty easy thing to like. I'm sitting up nice and high, got a good commanding view of the road, which is what a lot of people like about these so-called soft rotors. It's leaning a bit through corners and there's not a massive amount of grip from the tyres, but otherwise it drives pretty well, a lot like a car. One thing that does stand out though is the noise coming into the cabin. It's just road roar off the tyres and it gets a lot worse on those poor B grade roads that Australia's renowned for. It's also a little bit bumpy and that again can be a bit annoying. No complaints with the space though because the new RAV is bigger in every dimension. So plenty of headroom and in the back too families won't have much to whinge about. In fact it's now more like a mid-size four-wheel drive and that has taken its toll on weight because this car is significantly heavier than the older model and I'm feeling it in everyday driving. The engine just feels more lethargic. It's the same 2.4 litre four cylinder as the outgoing model and basically it's just not quite up to scratch. It also only has a four speed automatic transmission. These days a five is the norm. So again, there are bigger spaces between the gears, the engine's working harder, and all up, it doesn't feel as perky as it could be. Now, you could live with all that if the RAV was a bargain price, but it's not. In the base model, which starts for $31,990, you get a fair bit of kit, but you miss out on some crucial safety gear. Step up to this one, which is the Cruiser, and you're paying almost $40,000. Sure, there's a lot there, but still, it's a lot of money. One thing I won't be doing though is taking the RAV too far off-road. Toyota tried that on the official launch of this car and a few of them got stuck, a fairly embarrassing moment. On top of that it hasn't got a whole lot in the way of underbody protection and there's no set of low range gears. Now this rocky, dusty terrain is what I'm a little bit concerned about. The RAV's four-wheel drive system has gone from a full-time system, which Toyota used to say was great, to now a part-time system. So it essentially drives the front wheels predominantly until it needs the rears and then it kicks them into life. In reality, it seems to be working okay and there's also a traction control system to help divert power to the wheels that actually have grip. And that's just the start of the electronics in the latest RAV. It's also got a thing called downhill assist, which sort of is helping me clamber down these hills really slowly using the brakes to control the speed so it doesn't get away from me on steep stuff. Well that's great, I got down the hill safely, but getting back up the hill, and this four cylinder is quite frankly struggling, not liking it at all, and if I stop on a bit like this, this will be a real test. Full power, and it's only just edging off the line, and I would not want to be on anything steeper than that. I think you'd be walking home. At the end of the day, the RAV will surprise with what it can do on roads like this, even if this latest one is a bit of a letdown. But you still have to treat it accordingly and be aware of its limits. Better still, leave it in the city, which is exactly where I'm going right now.